There's an added benefit of entering recommendations for people you're connected with. Each time you do, the home page of each person that's connected with you shows that recommendation that they left for you and that you left for them on their status updates. When they hover over your link, it displays your profile, shows who you are, your one-line description of what you do, and you will get more invitations to connect on LinkedIn from this. <coughs> Creating a group on LinkedIn is another way to get connections and get the word out on your business. Click on the group links on the left of the page and then click on create a group on the right side of the page. When you create a group, make sure to create it based on what your target demographic would be interested in. Don't create it based on only what you would be interested in, although you should have some knowledge and at least a small interest in it to ensure that you can interact with the members. Then invite all of your connections to join the group. Post a link to your group and other groups as a discussion, if they allow it, of course. Follow their instructions and rules. Post a link to your group on Facebook and Twitter as well. That way, anyone that is interested will join your group. <coughs> One of the keys to owning a successful group on LinkedIn is moderating the discussions. I mentioned this briefly before that it's very user-moderated. You need to make sure that no one spams the discussions, and if they do, warn them or you'll remove them from the group. Or, if you've given them warnings, then remove them. Other group members on LinkedIn do not like it when someone joins just to spam, and you can usually tell. You'll get a notification that says someone joined the group, and then you'll instantly almost get a notification that says a discussion has been started by that user. Usually when you go to that one, you'll see that it's spam, so you just click delete. If you continue to grow the group by posting interesting information and articles, this will lead you to more connections and build more trust. People will search for groups that match yours and they'll join up. You might get a few competitors that join your groups, but remember, their followers are potential customers as well. So people they're linked in may know someone that's interested in photography, but if they join the photography group because of them linking to it, that's fine too. It's all about networking with others. This will in turn lead to more connections with people of like mind. The next section we're going to talk about is Twitter. It's kind of confusing, so I'm going to go over what is it, how to use it, and how to get what's called followers. Twitter is probably the most misunderstood social network out there right now, but when used properly, it can result in a huge return on your time investment. I get asked all the time, what is Twitter and how does it work? People aren't wondering if it's a social network or not. They just don't understand what it actually does. Think of Twitter like this. It's a texting platform just like your cell phone, but it's on the Internet. You use it through the Internet. You can use it from your cell phone, of course, and a lot of people do that, especially when they're traveling. But with this, when you text someone on Twitter, you can text hundreds or thousands of people at one time, the people that are following you, instead of just one person at a time, like on your cell phone. It's kind of like sending out a group text. <coughs> it's like sending out a single 140-character text to all of the contacts in your cell phone at the same exact time. The main difference being is that on Twitter, all of your contacts want to receive your text because they chose to follow you. By following you on Twitter, they said, yes, I want to see what John has to say. <coughs> now remember, they're following hundreds or thousands of people too. So your text can get lost in the shuffle. That's why it's important to regularly update your Twitter with tweets every day, even multiple times a day. That's what they're called as tweets. The hard part on Twitter is getting people to follow you. In the beginning, this is the toughest thing to grasp. But after I explain it and you try it, you'll see it's actually quite easy. Simply put, in order to get people to follow you, you must follow them. So go to search.twitter.com and search for whatever subject you wish. Then click on someone that comes up in the search results and click on the follow button under their icon. Most of the time when you follow someone, they will follow you back. If they don't, you can always unfollow them later. You can always also find your competition or companies in similar industries and start following their followers too. I use this strategy all the time. For example, let's say you sold resume writing services. You might start following the followers of a recruiting firm on Twitter because the people that are following them are either going to be other recruiting firms or people that are interested in having them work with them to help them find a job. Who needs the resume writing services? People that are looking for jobs. Either way, the more people you follow, the more people will follow you, and then their followers will see you, and then they follow you, and then you follow them, and then they restart, and then it keeps going around and around the circle. 
It is always better to follow more than you follow. For example, I have like 4,800 followers right now, but I'm actually following about 5,300 people. This proves, provides the illusion that you follow back when someone follows you, as you can see on the screen there. There's also a weekly event called Follow Friday where you will see tweets pop up with all at usernames listed and nothing else. Follow each one of those people and then retweet the message by copying and pasting it into your status area. This will insert you into the mix and they will retweet with you on the list now. This will get other people to follow you. It's kind of funny. It's almost like the old chain letters you used to get where you insert your name and then keep forwarding it to people. Except this one's legal, right? You're allowed to do this and it doesn't cost anything. There are two types of followers. One is the type that follows you because you are following them and the other type are the ones that follow you because they want to see what you have to say. So as you build up your followers, make sure to provide some form of interesting content to them on a regular basis to build trust. I know it's repetitive, and you've heard this two times before already, but Google News and Wikipedia are great sources for this information and articles until you start building your own database of information. Find hot topics or interesting information and post the link in your Twitter. Use a free URL short shortening service like Bitly, and you can find more of the subject, you can fit more of the subject into your tweet. There's only 140 characters. When you set up your profile on Twitter, make sure to enter your website or blog link. This provides a link from your Twitter homepage directly to your website, and that link is then clickable, as you can see on the screen. Customizing your Twitter homepage can also get you more followers and is a way to provide information and a good picture of yourself. Your homepage graphics are not clickable on Twitter, but you can include a basic paragraph about your company, your interests, or whatever you want. I found some free templates just by searching in Google and they allowed me to put up a nice professional template. Every time I post a, link, a tweet with a link in it that is mine to my blog or my website with an article or information on it, I see about a 1-2% to click-through ratio. Now remember, I have almost 5,000 followers, so 2% of that is, is about 100 people. As of this writing, I have about 5,000 followers, so that equals about, let's say, 80 to 100 people that click on one of my links. I usually post about three or four things a day, so that's, let's say, um, 200 to 500 click-throughs per day just from Twitter. I also post two or, three daily, two or three things daily that don't link to my website to keep things interesting and not all about me. But keep in mind, you're not going to do that in the beginning. You're going to be doing sharing, not giving, because you don't have anything to give. So in the beginning, you'll be doing more of posting other people's links. Make sure you integrate your Twitter link into your blog and website to allow people to start following you easily. My Twitter is twitter.com slash open a franchise. This link is on all of my websites and I do get followers from it. Twitter is tough to get a handle on, but once you do, it is quick, easy, and provides a good return on your time investment. YouTube, how to use it and how to get people to watch your videos. There are thousands of videos watched on the internet every day, if not millions. Video is one of the most effective means of getting your message through to a user if they're willing to watch it. The key to online video is to make it interesting or informative or both. I use YouTube to host a lot of my videos. They have a quick sign up process, it's easy to use, easy to upload, and they accept many, many formats. Although you are limited to a 10 minute video. So what you'll do with a longer video is split it up into sections, actually like I've done with this video. A short 10 minute video is a good way to keep a user engaged on your site. Create a video, link to it from your blog, or better yet, embed it into your website or blog by inserting the code that YouTube provides next to each video you upload, and this will keep a user on your site for 5 to 10 minutes, greatly increasing the chance that they will request more information or buy an item or fill out a form or whatever the call to action is that you're looking to get from that user. I do all of my own production, but that's because I have the software that does it. You can easily find someone to do it for you, but that usually does cost money. My videos might not be movie quality or HD DVD quality, but they're not bad and they do the job. 